Derek Chisora versus Arta Spilka. Now, I have spoken about this fight before. It's a fight which I think Derek Chisora should win, but there is a little area of concern here for me, for Derek Chisora. And the area of concern is that he may not be sufficiently motivated to put in the kind of performance that it will take to beat Arta Spilka, who, if nothing else, is a good mover. Arta Spilka does have the ability to move, and when he's motivated himself, he can be a tricky customer. We saw that in the Deontay Wilder fight because he was giving Deontay Wilder plenty of problems through whatever it was, eight, nine rounds before he got clipped. Don't let anybody try and convince you otherwise. Go watch the fight for yourselves. Wilder was having lots of problems against Spilka. There were many people who, in my estimation, were perfectly reasonable in saying that Spilka on their scorecard was ahead at the time that he got clipped and knocked out. So Spilka on his day is a good mover who can be difficult to track down. So what we you know, have to look at here by way of a danger for Derek Chisora is that he could go in there maybe a little under-motivated and have a repeat of the performance he, uh, you know, he, he put in against, what's that guy called? The Turkish-German guy. I forget his name off the top of my head. <laughs> my mind's gone blank. You know the guy I'm talking about. In fact, let me look at his record here. Where is he? Uh, God, where is he at? Kabayel, excuse me. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, so if Chisora has a repeat of the kind of performance he had against Kabayel, he could very well lose the Spilka fight. Because Spilka is not a guy who's going to stand right in front of you and wait for you to hit him on the chin. He's going to move around. He's going to give you angles. He's going to make it as awkward for you as he possibly can. Derek Chisora is going to need to walk this guy down. He's going to need to apply a lot of pressure. He might need to take it into the second half of the fight. You know? Now, with that being said, Spilka doesn't have the greatest of punch resistance. He has been stopped a number of times. And off the top of my head, who stopped him? Bryant Jennings stopped him. I think that was Spilka's first defeat. Then he was stopped by... Uh, Adam Kalnaki, and of course he was, no, he was stopped then by Wilder, then he was stopped by Kalnaki, so he's been stopped three times, those are his three losses, so he isn't the most durable guy, and I certainly believe that Derek Chisora has more than enough power to hurt and stop Artis Spilka, if he can land on him cleanly and consistently enough, and obviously the blueprint that Derek Chisora should be looking at uh, for beating Artis Spilka should be the Kalnaki fight, that's where Spilka was stopped in four. And also, to some extent, the Jennings fight, because Jennings, again, was able to, you know, put pressure on Artis Spilka, break him down and stop him very, very late. That was in the, in the final round of their bout. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Jennings fight should be a blueprint for Derek Chisora. And again, more recently, the Adam Kalnaki fight, where Kalnaki was able to get right on top of Artis Spilka very early on and put a lot of pressure on him and take him out in four rounds. Great performance that by Kaunaki. Can Derek Chisora do something similar? I would personally be a little surprised if Chisora stopped him that quick because I think Kaunaki, taller than Derek Chisora, um, and at this stage of their careers, I think Kaunaki's maybe a bit more relentless than Chisora. You know, Chisora can still come forward and throw a lot of shots, but he's not a spring chicken anymore. Kaunaki's a guy who's still in his 20s, I believe. So Kaunaki, you know, taller guy. I'm not sure what Kaunaki's reach is, his official reach anyway, 76. So similar to Chizora's, to be honest, in terms of the reach department. Uh, but yeah, a bit taller than Chizora. I think a bit more relentless, throws a bit more punches at this stage of his career. So was able to get uh, Spilker out of there early. If Chizora's going to get Spilker out of there, I would imagine it's going to be at least by the midway stage, if not later than that, you know, at the uh, the very minimum, I reckon it's going to be six, seven rounds, maybe after that, if he's going to get rid of Spilka. But again, if Derek Chisora has a listless performance, if he can't get himself up for this fight, and we've seen Derek Chisora have these listless, listless performances many times where he can't seem to motivate himself for fights, there could be an upset here. You know, I'm not picking uh, Spilka to win. I'm picking Chisora to win. But if Chisora is not completely motivated, we could see the same thing happen that happened in the Caballel fight. Yeah, where Chisora could come unstuck on a points decision 
uh, to a guy who does move well. For all his vulnerabilities and weaknesses, Spilka has good legs. He can move around well. And he's a southpaw, you know, that might not complement Derek Chisora that well, you know, in terms of stylistically, the way it matches up. So, yeah, that's my take on it. I'm taking Derek Chisora to win. And I'm provisionally going to say, and, and in fact, before I, before I pick a winner in this fight, I want to see Derek Chisora's weight. Because if he's light enough, he should be able to track Spilka down relatively uh, quickly. He'll be a lot you know, better at tracking him down. In his last fight, look at him there, 259 against Senagashi. That's too heavy. That's plodding and cumbersome at 259. If he comes in that kind of weight against Spilka, he could have problems. If he comes in the kind of weight he was against Dylan White or lighter at 246, he should have enough to stop Spilka probably late in the fight. Yeah, or maybe take it on points. But if he's coming in 260, stuff like that, hey people, you might see an upset. You might see an upset. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.